Well, hello, YouTubers. Don't you hate it when you get up in the morning and you plan a trip and you head out to your vehicle only to find out this? And you get in and you stick your key in and only to find out this, it doesn't want to do anything. Well, I'm going to show you how to start your vehicle by using a stick or a small pipe. All right, now the first thing we've got to do is locate the battery. We've got to eventually find out if this thing has lost charge or what's going on. Or maybe it's just a bad connection going down to the starter. So really, without any fancy tools or anything, the easiest way to check your battery is if it's fully charged. Just simply turn your key on, turn your heater on, the fan, turn your wipers on, and go outside and look at the headlights and see if they're pretty bright. And they are, so therefore I know my battery is fully charged. Okay, now if you verified that, if you want, you can still go ahead and get your set of jumper cables and jump the vehicle and see if that works. If that doesn't work, then we need to move on to the next step. Now the next step is to look for the starter. Now most starters are between the engine and the transmission. If you have a horizontally posed engine and transmission, usually they're pretty easy to get to. On my 4.6, I know exactly where my starter is. I can actually get it from up here or I can get it from right down there. And if you look closely, right about there, that is where my starter is. So what we'll do next is simply grab our stick. Now, you can use a stick, uh, a broomstick, or you can use a small lightweight weight pipe. Now, I like the lightweight pipe only because it's a little heavier and it will give you something to actually tap that starter with. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this pipe and kind of stick it on the starter back there. And I think you can see it, and it's right about there. I'm gonna hit it a couple times. And we'll go inside and see if that does the trick. Okay, now we're back inside. Let's see if this will start. Still nothing. So we got to check a couple of other things here real quick. Okay, now here are the two starters that are on my vehicle. Typically, uh, most cars just have one. That's really all I have, but I have two out here just for video purposes. Now, on the back of these starters, you have a little thing called a solenoid. If you can get a screwdriver, and get in here and kind of short the starter out like this. Make sure your car is in park and have somebody inside turn the key on. And uh, when you have the key on, just in the on position, not starting position, if you kind of short this out just like that, this sometimes will kick the solenoid in and will get your starter going. And believe it or not, on some vehicles there are actually two solenoids. You have one on the starter, and on my vehicle I have one bolted on the firewall. Now with the key on, you can typically just take your screwdriver and short these two uh, bolts right here like that. And if you hear that starter kick in, then you know your starter is getting good contact. So we'll do that again, and you can see the starter is trying to turn over. But it is a little hard, so this tells me that this solenoid is good, which is a good thing. Hmm. Okay, now after we've done all that, now sometimes it does help to have a little persuasion. I have a hammer here, and now since I know where my starter is, I'm going to simply get under the vehicle. And you can see it is right there. I'm just going to take my hammer and kind of hit this a couple times. And what this does, it jars the starter pretty good, and it will allow those brushes to make pretty decent contact. And if there is a uh, problem with the starter, it should start right up now. And before we do that, just for good measure, we're going to take our pipe one more time. We get in here where that starter is and kind of tap this a couple more times to make sure we've get this, uh, got this starter a pretty good uh, shake. And like I said, if any of those brushes are dirty, loose, or just worn out, they will get good contact. And when it does start, leave it running, do your errands, and come back and shut it off so you can work on it. So let's try this. All right, I think that should be pretty good. Now, before we go to start this up, just one other thing here. Make sure that you have at least an eighth of a tank or at least a quarter. My fuel is pretty low. The reason is because if you uh, find out you're just low on fuel and you're cranking this thing, you will burn up your uh, fuel pump motor. And here are just some of the fuel pump motors that I've worked on. What happens if you let the fuel get too low in these fuel pumps, what happens? It will suck air and burn these up. These things stay cool by pumping fuel through. So if you run out of fuel and you crank in your engine, and this thing is running, it will definitely burn up your fuel pump and you're going to have to replace it and it could cost you hundreds of dollars, so just be aware of that. All 
Okay, now since I gave you the story on the fuel pump and everything, we've hit the starter on the top, we've hit it on the bottom with a hammer. Now let's go inside and see if this thing starts up. And remember, if you're having a starter problem and you get it running, don't shut it off until you get back. So you can do your errands and that way when you get back, you can actually do work on the car and it will get you down the road. So let's see if it'll start now. And voila, it is running. This is what we want to do. So if you're having any problems like this with your vehicle, uh, get out there and tap that starter a little bit. Find your solenoids, check those. You can short those out, and it'll also short the uh, solenoid out where it will start the car and get, to get you back on the road. So let's shut it off real quick. Okay, now we got the car uh, shut off. Now, like I said, if you can find your solenoid, to check, double check your solenoid to see if it's bad or not. Uh, just get your screwdriver. We'll simply go back inside here and we'll start this. Uh, uh, turn. We'll just turn the key on, on the on position. Okay, it is on. It is in park. And the emergency brake is on. And this is how you double check your solenoid up here if you have a secondary solenoid. And like I said, you can do this on the starter if you can get to it. So we'll just short this out and we'll see if the solenoid is good. If it starts up, we know it's good. There we go. So we know the solenoid's good. So basically, I just have a bad starter and I'll have to replace it. All right, so there you go. Hopefully, if you're having a starting problem, these tips will help you get you back on the road. Now, if it doesn't uh, work out that way, you may have to replace a starter. Now, just remember, if you hit it a couple times and uh, it starts starting pretty good and you think, well, I don't have to replace a starter, well, beware because over three or four cycles, that starter will start dragging again and you may have to replace it. And here are, like I said, a couple of starters that I've had to replace. And this one here, if I hit it hard enough, you can hear it making noise. Both of these are bad. And they are fairly easy to replace, but the Fords make it a little difficult. There's a top bolt right here that's uh, difficult to get to, and you gotta, you got to kind of uh, work around that. So I hope this helps you guys out. And if you like any of my videos, please subscribe. And if you have any questions, I will certainly try to answer them. Oh. So there you go, folks. Happy starting. And like I said, if you hit that starter hard enough, it'll sound like there's nothing wrong with it after three or four cycles. But after a few cycles, it will start to drag again. Then it'll eventually stop turning, and you'll have to come out here and grab a pipe or something or a hammer and tap on it to get your car started. And like I said, this is just a way to get you started and get down the road so you can do what you need to do and get back home and fix that sucker. All right, guys. Thank, uh, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. Looks like I'm gonna go out today and pick up a starter. A beautiful afternoon out here. Uh, blue skies, about as blue as you can get. And I should be able to pick up a starter for about forty-five or fifty dollars. So hopefully these tips will help you out if you have this problem. Just remember, if you're doing this by yourself, remember you to keep your vehicle in park, pull the emergency brake, and if you can. Uh, put some blocks under the wheels because you don't want to get ran over, especially if you have a standard. It's very easy to forget that the car is in gear, and when you do any of these tricks and your vehicle actually starts, it will uh, move and maybe run over you. So be careful about that. So other than that, thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my videos, and I will try to answer all your questions that you have. Until then, guys, I will see you later, and be careful. Until then, I'll see you then.